14th March 2006, there was an earthquake in Gujarat. It wasn't the earthquake which was like it happened in Kutch a few years before that. It was an earthquake with a greater intensity. The shock waves going across India to the other parts of the globe. The intensity was in Rajpipla, small town near Baroda. This earthquake was not a natural calamity. It was a man-made earthquake. It was a headline news appearing in a Gujarati newspaper which said, the prince of Rajpipla declares he is homosexual. And it created tremors all over the place. Never before a member of a royal family had made this kind of a statement. Let me take you flashback. 23rd September 1965. The crown prince of Rajpipla, an erstwhile princely family, was born as the 39th direct descendant of a 650-year-old Gohil dynasty. There was rejoicement in the town. Yes, in those days, we still had our privileges. They were banned in 1971 by the former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. A prince being born in the family is supposed to be the future custodian of the rich cultural heritage inherited by our ancestors. We are born with a golden spoon, as it's called. And we are subject to a lot of rules, regulations, protocols, norms. Our lives are not like commoners. It's very much different. Just to give you an example, at the age of 10, I was invited as a chief guest for a school function. How many of you would get that kind of a chance? I was brought up by a governess, a nanny, not by my parents. So I have absolutely no attachment to my mother and father. I mean, I'm sure most of us here have this mental conditioning. We are so attached to our parents. We are so formal in royal families that we don't even call our parents mom and dad. I have never called that. And neither have they called me by my name. We address them as His Highness, Her Highness, and they call me Yuvraj. So that's the upbringing. You're groomed to take over charge. And that was my upbringing. No communication. I grew up in this huge mansion in Mumbai with 22 servants serving me. I never even had a chance to get a glass of water from the fridge. It was given to me by the servants. And in that stage, to be born as gay. So you can imagine. I think around the age of 12 or 13, like all other children realize, that is during the puberty, I realized that I, I'm different. I'm attracted towards the same sex. But I didn't know what was the meaning about it. I couldn't talk to anyone, no communication. My nanny was uneducated. So I just grew up thinking that maybe it's just a passing phase in my life and it will get over and I'll be like any other person. In 1991, I got married to a beautiful princess. And it was my own choice. But unfortunately, the marriage was a complete disaster. It ended in the 15 months with divorce due to non-consummation of marriage. It was then I realized I should start finding out what went wrong. I need to explore myself, my identity, my sexuality. And in the mid-90s, I came to terms with my sexuality with the help of India's leading gay activist, 
Ashok Rao Kavi, who had come out in the late 1980s. It was through him I realized that I am not the only one. There are hundreds, thousands, millions of us on this earth. And it's the society which keeps telling you that it's a sin, it's something wrong. But in actually, in, in the given facts, our, cult, our culture, our Indian culture was very rich with sexuality. We boast to be the first country in the world to have a sex encyclopedia called the Kama Sutra, which was written 500 years even before Jesus Christ was born. So when people say, oh, homosexuality was not in our culture, it was imported, I said, no way. It was exported, rather. There we have in the, in the, in the Kama Sutra a whole chapter on homosexuality which is depicting even same-sex positions, lesbianism, transgenderism, you go to Khajurao, there are statues which are depicting homoerotic sculptures. Of course, government has banned some of those from the tourists, you cannot go to those places, but I have managed to get pictures of the, the statues. So where did this come from? And what was the downfall? The downfall began with Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code, which was a colonial law enacted during the British rule by Queen Victoria. She had her personal interest in that, of course, because of after 1857 of the uh, Indian Mutiny, she wanted to crush a lot of people who were influencing to revolt against the Britishers, so this law was enacted. Now, this law has been wrongly misinterpreted. This law, as we are fighting for it, it's, the matter is still going on in the Supreme Court, which is anti-sodomy, and which talks about uh, criminalizing the Homosexual Act. But this law is also criminalizing the Heterosexual Act. This act says that any kind of penetrative sexual act, which is against the order of nature, and which doesn't result in procreation, between a man and a man, and a man and a woman. And of course, man and animal, that's what it also says, is illegal. That means even a husband and wife who are a married couple, legally married couple, and indulge in any kind of sexual act which doesn't result in the child, it could be oral sex, it could be anal sex, it could be sex using condoms, or if, a mother, if the, the, the woman has passed her reproductive age and she can't bear a child, then that kind of an act is also illegal. It also says, there's an there's a interpretation of this law that even masturbation is illegal. So my dear friends, I'm sure in this audience, I don't know how many people are legal then. We should make more and more jails to have accommodate all of us. To, so that you come under this law. So that's what we are fighting for. And the government says, well, this is against, this is immoral, this is unnatural, this is abnormal. Fine. Why do you have Khajurao then? Why is the Kama Sutra? That's the question mark. So friends, my whole coming out was because I wanted to break this hypocrisy. I was sure that my coming out will definitely make a difference. And in the year 2007 was the breaking point in my life when Oprah Winfrey invited me. I was the third Indian to be invited by Oprah Winfrey. It was Aishwarya Rai before me and then it was me. So I was the third one. And there are a lot of Oprah fans in India and she kind of opened up a lot of avenues, a lot of people in the world saw the show, and a lot of facts came out that it was never a crime, it is never a crime to be gay in India, it's the homosexual act which is a crime. Another thing which came up was that 80% of the gay men in India are 
heterosexually married to women and most of them by force. See, none of us have attraction for women, sexual attraction. But our parents, they force us to get married because it's part of society. And what happens? The marriage is disaster. Look at my case. My marriage was absolutely disaster, though it was my choice. But still, the poor girl's life gets spoiled. She has no clue that her husband's gay. On top of that, by getting married to a woman, you don't become straight. I, 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 I'm a counselor. I ask questions to a lot of gay men. I said, oh, uh, so you got married to a woman. How was the first night? And she says, and he says, oh, you know what? I, when I was indulging in sexual intercourse with my wife, I just closed my eyes and I imagine I'm with Arjun Rampal. I said, there, there is the answer. So you know, she's not looking at the wife, she's he's imagining John Abraham, Arjun Rampal. Well, that's, a, that's what it is. So that's the hypocrisy. And believe me, there were so many people who are spreading homophobia. After I came out, the same day I came out, my effigies were burnt in the fire. People protested, the whole town, which looks upon the royal family as their role model, as their icons. We are followed all over. There's paparazzi. Media has always been after me, right since my birth. And there's nothing new about media being, being chasing me now. I'm used to it. So there were protests. They said he should be stripped of his title. He should be boycotted from all social events. He has no right to be called a prince. He should be exiled from here. There were widespread protests. My parents, they brought out an advertisement in the newspaper, said that our son has been engaging in activities which are not acceptable by society. He should be disowned from our uh, family. He should be disinherited from the ancestral property. To all these reactions which happened, I had just one made one statement on television and I said, I don't blame them. I don't blame the people who burnt my effigies. I don't blame the, my parents, but I blame their ignorance. They don't know about homosexuality. How would they know about what I am? And it is my duty as an activist to educate them what is right and wrong. Once I was having an argument with Baba Ramdev. I, I, I don't want to offend if there are any Baba Ramdev admirers here. But he, he told me that uh, I can make you straight. I said, OK, how? So he said, you just come to my ashram to Haridwar. In, in three months, I will make you straight. I said, wow, that's nice. As I, I called my other friends, I said, hey, you want to make your mom happy? Come, come with me, come to her, let's go to Hardwar. We are all going to be coming straight, your mother will be very happy. And she'll get you married with a beautiful woman. And they all my friends joined in and I said, let's go. Then I had a thought. I, I called Baba again. I said, Baba, I respect you for all what you're doing for us, for yoga. You're, you are really spreading uh, good knowledge. But I just have one thing to tell you. I'll come to your ashram for three months. If you are not able to make me straight in three months, you come to my palace, to Rajpipla. And in three hours, I'll make you gay. Are you ready? The Baba hasn't taken the challenge as yet. That was 2008. This is 2017. So much so, one day he was planning to come to Rajpipla for a religious, uh, for a spiritual discourse. The moment he came to know I am the town, he last minute cancelled. Because he's guilty. He is unaware, he is ignorant, he has a lot of knowledge on yoga, but no knowledge on homosexuality. 
Friends, it's unfortunate that our educational institutions are not inculcating sex education. So where do they have knowledge about homosexuality? But in, I'm glad that events like these TED Talks are spreading awareness. So I came to this conclusion that I want to develop a LGBTQA community center. It's a, it sounds like a very long name. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. A stands for allies. This is the first project of its kind in India where the purpose is to give financial empowerment and independence to the community, especially the ones who want to come out and tell their parents that mom, I'm gay, I don't want to get married. What's going to happen? The mom and dad are going to say, get out! And once the child gets out, then he has no place to go. So he can come to my center, it will be having a rescue home, a shelter home, they can stay there, and we, I will teach them skills, make them stand on, my, on their feet and send them back to the society and say, look, I can do this and I can still stay in the society, I can still remain without parental support, I can still remain in the society and do things what I want to do. So, I would just like to say to guys, all you guys here that Friends, if you are gay, if you are lesbian in this audience, accept yourself, accept what you are. That is the first step which will help you to be comfortable with your own self. And I'm sure there would be a lot of number of gays and lesbians in this audience because a survey has said that 5 to 10 percent of any given population anywhere in the world is gay. So, uh, I leave it up to you to decide if you have friends and if, the, if you want to, if you can help me, then the best way would be to talk to them, tell them to remove this guilt feeling from their mind. If you love, give love, you'll get 100 times more love. So just accept and be happy and be gay. Thank you very much.